This is Dr. Mariah White, host of Your Life Matters. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hi, this is Emily. This is Lindsay. And this is Elizabeth, co-hosts of Beauties and Headcanons here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, we hope you'll come check out our show, Beauties and Headcanons, where we talk nerdy to you about fandoms, fan fiction, and all pop culture for nerds that you can think of. A new show comes out every Friday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Beauties and Headcanons. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. everyone, welcome to No Filter Friday on Public House Media, and it is going to be the least fun No Filter Friday ever. Um, today was not supposed to uh, go this way, but it has, and we were supposed to be talking about Oscar stuff and Rami Malek. Oh, Alexa Polar's here. Thanks for coming on. Anyway, so we were supposed to be talking about Oscars and like all these stories that broke this week because they have. And then some really wonderful, awesome people on Twitter uh, reached out about um, another show on Heather Perry because Heather Perry's been fired from Live Nation. Surprise, surprise. And it was supposed to be like a whole other way, but it has gone this way. Nothing but a Starbucks cup to... And it's a holiday one from the clearance rack to comfort me in my time of need. Um, so this week is a little... It's, you know, it's Oscar weekend. Uh, Sunday, today's parties, tomorrow's parties, and then Oscars is on Sunday, um, followed by some more parties. And then we're out. We're out of award show season, and it's over with. Um, but not without... Uh, I guess, you know, not everybody was going to make it through a horse show season. We always joke and say that, like, oh, we survived, you know, going to more parties this week. And that is true, we did. But the unfortunate part is that not everybody survives. And we were at uh, the this one gifting suite that we go to um, every year at the Waldorf and it's like so beautiful and everybody's around. Oh, Cheryl's here. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks for coming in. Um, so, oh, and Elizabeth. Hey. Uh, so we were at the towel gifting suite today, which is, you know, so gorgeous and wonderful. It's at the Waldorf. And if like the Waldorf in New York is great, don't get it twisted. But the new one in Beverly Hills is beyond amazing. And, it's it's so gorgeous every time we go there. It's just jaw dropping. But um, so we were basically done through the gifting suite and we had a great time. Um, and if everybody was there. I pulled up and Lunell pulled up in the uh, in the valet with me and she's like pimping along in her new Mercedes because she's in. She worked on A Star Is Born, which is awesome for her because she works on everything. But that one's like a really really big one for her. And just running into you know people that we always do. Um, yeah, go, oh gosh, go to the Waldorf. It's so amazing. And they're so nice. The staff is so nice. Um, and so we get, you know, that's like up in the ballroom. So we go get in the elevator and go downstairs and we're just, you know, checking our phones, like after going around and meeting everybody and doing the carpet and talking to everyone. And what I wanted to do, um, for today's was like, because I was at the gifting suite with so many people was to just get little blurbs about, <clears throat> Me Too and Oscars and then like smush it all together for a pre tape video. And that didn't happen because we were got on our phones and the news was announced by like the Blast and TMZ that our very, very, very dear friend, Brody Stevens, was found in his house um, by another comic and he hung himself. And it's just awful. Like he tweeted yesterday that he wanted to go back to like doing comedy festivals and it's just so bizarre because like 
Brody has done Steven's show like at least five or six times and not just like the live show, but like he's come to like, you know, pre-tape because he, you know, he did his impression of Steve Jobs or whatever, which was hilarious and perfect and awesome. Um, but he was just always around. Like we see him every Thanksgiving when we go to the Laugh Factory. It is horrible, Cheryl. It is horrible. Um, like if you look through like my old Insta stories, you know, of on Thanksgiving day at the laugh factory, like handing out food because Jamie Masada, the guy that runs the laugh factory does, um, free Thanksgiving for basically all of Los Angeles. It's like all day he's, you know, feeding the homeless and then, you know, the comics serve them and it takes an army of people to do this. And bro, we always see Brody and, and then, well, (laughs) it's kind of like a weird thing. Like you're serving and then people sit down once like that round of people goes through and then people get up and do stand up, and that, you know, like Tiffany Haddish and Brody and, um, it just all kinds of people that come there. Dane comes, um, Tito Ortiz was in town this Thanksgiving. So, you know, he didn't necessarily do stand up cause it's not really his bag, but, um, he came and surfed like everybody, everybody does. Um, and now I'm blanking on people's names because I'm distraught. But anyway, besides that's besides the point, but it's just, it's so crazy to me how I can like look through my old stories and there's Brody like on Thanksgiving on like, just like every year. And it's, it's just so, it's so awful. Like we had John Schnapp, you know, die on us, um, over Comic-Con this year, which was like absolutely devastating. And then the fact that Brody just decided to check out on us and he's always been really 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 open about how (laughs) he's (laughs) him and Zach Galifianakis did a show about how how depressed Brody is and him like flirting with killing himself and I don't know if that whole like life imitates art thing is like completely accurate because I think it's like the other way around basically but if you go back a few, few, few shows, like last year in the winter, like around this time last year, so after Thanksgiving, after all that, um, I don't really go to the comedy clubs like I used to. I used to live across the street from Laugh Factory, so I was, you know, there for people's shows. And then, like, the improv has always been, like, my second home since I was, like, 19, which is where Steven and I met. And the, you know, the bar that we met at is upstairs now in the green room. But I don't really go to stuff anymore, mostly because psychopaths show up to the shows thinking that I'm going to be there. And I'm like, ha ha, just kidding. I'm not there. I'm at home taking care of my dogs, not talking to psychopaths. But um, the point being is, is that I don't really go to shows anymore. And on Christmas Eve, not this year, but last year, um, Stephen did the Comedy Store, which was a show that he doesn't do very often. Um, or was it another night? I don't know. Because I, I know Brody was there on Christmas Eve because I remember that show just clear as day. And then it might have been another show because Jade Cataprota was there. But it was kind of like just as Me Too was really, really getting its getting its hooks in. And I was like, oh, Brody's going to be there tonight. Like we should go. And I didn't just like great to see a show or whatever, but I wanted to go see him personally. Um, so I went and I, I don't remember if Steve and I went together. I met him up there or whatever, but after the show, yeah. Cause Steven got up to everybody in, um, Bobby Lee, Bobby Lee gets up like three times a night. He like barely counts, <laughs> but you know, everybody got up and it was okay. It wasn't like the best crowd ever, but we're sitting in the back. There's like a, like the, the comedy store has like the parking is like this big. It's like the size of your thumbnail. It fits all of like four cars back there. So we were sitting back, like beyond the back patio and Brody's sitting on the steps and it was me and Steven. And then Jade Cataprata came and talked to us for a while. And I think little Esther was there. Um, I remember squeezing her into my boobs, so she must've been there. And 
hearing Brody talk about how, oh, my set wasn't good enough, and this wasn't good enough, and I didn't get enough good enough laughs, and I didn't get this, and I didn't get that, and it was terrible, it was garbage, it was awful, which no one agreed with ever in the history of Brody Stevens, and it's just, it's, which is so strange because, like, that's where comedy comes from. It's, like, telling the worst thing that's ever happened to you um, without, but making it laughter like it's kind of like that whole like laughter through tears thing like comedy is pain it really really is and it's of no wonder that we lose the people that we do and it sucks and it's terrible and it's awful and it's such a strange business to be in that makes everybody else happy but it also attracts these (sighs) broken unhappy people as this cathartic mechanism and it sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't but Apparently, according to the media and pretty much everybody in town is agreeing with it, is that he decided to take himself off of his medication a couple months ago because he felt like it dulled his creative situation. And bro, he was kind of a deadpan guy, so I'm not exactly sure what his line of thinking was on that. But what's wild to me about this announcement today, because it happened at like one o'clock, um, or like just before one of the news broke at one, but I guess uh, my biggest takeaway from it is that I've always walked and Stephen too, I've always walked around in the way that like, if I'm feeling some type of way of something, they'd be like, that's it. You got it. And if you just do Brody Stevens voice in your mind or preferably out loud, You will make yourself in a better mood. And it is so terrible that his own voice didn't do that for him. And Steve and I were talking in the car because I had to go get um, my eyelashes done. Not that you can, you know, if you're a podcast listener, you can't really appreciate these lashes. I mean, look at this. Um, And, you know, Stephen was like, well, you know, everybody, everybody loved Brody, which is 100% true. Look at the Internet. People are just crushed. Ow, oh, Tira is here. Hello, Tira. Um, crushed that he has decided to leave us. And it was like, well, you know, so it was like everybody loved Brody. Everybody loved him. And I th- that's 100% true. But Brody didn't have enough love for Brody, unfortunately. And he was always upset with himself that he should have. He always thought that he should have been better, should have been this. And... Uh, It's just not really, um, it was better. Like it was just a complete disconnect in his, you know, in his psyche, which is so incredibly awful, but it's like, it's like a death week, man. Like the beginning of the week, it was Carl Lagerfeld and that was a horrible thing for me. I had to go coat myself in as much Fendi and Chanel as I could find and some, you know, just regular Carl Lagerfeld stuff. And then I had to go to Rodeo and go visit the mothership and talk to the salespeople. And I went into Chanel and it was like business as usual, but everybody felt super weird. And that whole like luxury community, it sounds funny, but it exists. I promise you. Um, was like, should they do some sort of tribute in the store or, Are they not going to, because that wasn't really his thing, but at the essence of it, like the, the whole store is a tribute to Carl because it's all his stuff. It's, you know, all of everything in Chanel is, you know, came out of Carl. So in essence, it kind of already is a tribute. So we got to make it to Sunday and see what happens. Like God only knows, but the hard part is, is like, It's everybody's just basically like hit the brakes. Like we were supposed to go to a, um, a dinner for the animation nominees and, uh, a magazine party tonight. And basically we just can't, I don't even know what we're going to do tomorrow. Sunday is going to suck. I can tell you that right now. It's just awful. It is just awful. So, um, anyway, well, let me back up a little bit. So, when that night that we win, we're just sitting, you know, behind the comedy store talking about things. Brody and I had a, a, a long talk about Me Too and how it made people feel and how we need to, like, 
rein ourselves in and maybe not be such (laughs) crass, awful people. And I think that's true with or without me too. Like we all, especially in LA, like in Hollywood in general is like, it's a mean place. Like we're all like, ah, like that's, Oh, you're not nominated for an Oscar this year. Oh my God. Like, what are you doing in here? And that's literally conversations that I have heard this week, the week before, the week before that, the week before that. And, you know, up until basically the first of the year, essentially, like everybody's like, Oh, but you're in this party. Like, why? Like, you're not nominated this year or, oh, you're only nominated for this or blah. Like, it's, it's, it's grimy. Is it trying to escape? That's my Tara Reed nipple. It just jumps out at people. I, I apologize. But thank you for, uh, thank you for keeping an eye on my tatas. I'm wearing, like, this is how disheveled I am, okay? Robe for sure, as always. But the reason I'm wearing a robe is because I have a jumpsuit on And I had to go to the bathroom, so I took off the top half of it. And I am so distraught that I can't even put the top on. So I just, like, it's zebra robe night, y'all. It's not even, not even the good one. Oh, Jason is here. Thanks for coming in. Um, It's rough. I don't even know how the rest of this weekend is going to go. But on a happier note, if there are any, there's basically not. But if they're David Bobke hashtag Tara Reed nipple, there's a tag for this episode. Tag away, tag away. I mean, it's not. Unfortunately, it's not just this episode. It's like been my whole life. Like I'll just be walking through Ralph's trying to buy chili and triscuits, and out it goes. It's a wonder I haven't been arrested yet. Honestly, at the behest of my right nipple. Sorry, kids. I try. I really do try to rein it in. I swear to God, it's just physically demanding to do so. Uh but oh John McKenzie hi John McKenzie um it sucks y'all it absolutely sucks I had so many things that I I planned that I wanted to do for this episode but it's just not happening so maybe I'll do like a bonus episode this week or something uh on top of our other little fun happy thing uh after the Oscars is over we're getting into Paley Fest and I, and the show, I, for No Filter Friday on Public House Media, I'm going to cover um, a Paley event that is, if you don't know what the Paley Television Festival is, go Google it. It's really, really awesome. But most of the time it's um, current shows that are going or like really, really iconic shows that have like a screening or a carpet, a screening, and then a Q&A or a panel, blah, 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 blah. Um, But for this one that I'm covering is for um, a singer who was in the Supremes. And she's like an OG. She's an OG singer. And I get to go. I'm not covering the carpet. I'm actually going into the event. And I get to ask um, questions from, you know, from the the media pit. It's not really a pit. It's like reserve seating. But still. Uh, (laughs) I get to ask questions from that of this lady who was, you know, I'm from Detroit, Supremes, we're Motown, and um, she's been around for, you know, ever, and she's seen things move and change, and I'm really curious to see um, what she thinks about how, uh, because she's seen so many changes in the industry, um, what Me Too is doing with, you know, how things are going to come out, because in beauty, (laughs) they always say that, like, you know, when in doubt, kick it old school, (laughs) Break out, break out the aluminum uh, curlers because they work. Old school works. So she's about as old school as it gets. Um, first, uh, for you know, being a lady in uh, the entertainment industry. So I'm really excited to ask her questions that I'm formulating by myself. But if you have questions that you want me to ask an original supreme, uh, send them to my inbox and thanks. I've been getting a lot of uh, No Filter Friday, not me, I should say that. No Filter Friday has been getting quite a bit of uh, of Twitter love in the past couple weeks, which has been really cool. So thank you for that. Um, and that's it. This, I mean, this episode sucks. It just does because today sucks and, the con- and it will continue to suck for until at least the rest of the weekend. And hopefully um, we don't lose anybody else this week because... Carl, Brody, 
I can't. I'm out. I was tapped out from Carl, and now I'm on, like, another stratosphere of tapped out from Brody Stevens deciding to depart us. So... I will see you all next week. Maybe I'll do a um, maybe I'll do a bonus episode or something um, for like Oscar coverage, like when I can get my mind and my right nipple all packaged up together and making sense. So I will see you all uh, next week at the very latest. Maybe we'll do a bonus episode from the Paley Fest, but I will see you later. 